Hello, good day and welcome back. So today we're going to start looking at some Go concurrency patterns. And the first one we're going to look at is generators. Um, I wouldn't focus so much on a name for a pattern, just being able to recognize the pattern. A pattern is just something that you reuse. Um, you're going to find that from time to time as you program these things come up over and over, you want to do the same thing. And so we call them patterns. And people who do this often sometimes document it or come up with a good way of doing it. And so it's good to kind of know those patterns. Um, if you're going for a job interview, you might want to know the names because somebody might refer to it by its name and say, oh, what is the generator pattern in concurrency or something else or a software pattern, um, you know, adapter pattern in object-oriented programming or something else. But once you get to that level, you're going to start encountering the patterns often and the name are going to make sense and you're going to remember it. But if this is your first time, don't worry, focus on the name, focus on the concept. Okay. All right. So in this case, what is a generator pattern um, or what is a generator? Uh, for us, in terms of concurrency, a generator is simply a function that launches a Go routine to produce data on a channel uh, that it returns. And this is going to make sense. Um, so it's going to do two things, this generator. It's going to create a channel, return it, so that once you invoke that generator, you get back a channel. And then what you should expect from that channel is data to be produced on it. So the generator itself must launch the Go routine that's going to generate the data on that pattern. And you're going to see what I mean. So I'm telling you what it is, and then I'm going to show you. So um, let's look back at some code that we did in section two. And so we had this, where main made a channel, asked the producer to produce some data on that channel, um, but it launched a Go routine and said, hey, go generate some data in this channel. And then it launched a Go routine that says, hey, go consume some data in this channel. And so basically what we had was this producer just writing data on a channel and consuming, consuming it. Um, for a generator, what you really want to happen is the, when you call the generator, it should you know, go create the channel, then gen create the con go routine to generate data on that channel. And so let's um, take a look at the code. So let me go back here. And uh, oh, before I, I do that, um, let me do this. Okay. So one of the things you're going to see, um, if you look and I put a link to, to this talk here, that's also in the resources that I give at the beginning of chapter eight on Go um, routines. And that is this talk by Robert Pike on concerns, concurrency patterns. And so you can see him and other people doing is when they talk about a Go routine, they use the Go mascot here, this gopher. And so when you're talking about it like a generator, for example, it's like this gopher, right? Um, this independent thing, this little actor here, who um, is talking through a megaphone there, but basically generating data, right? He's doing some, something. Um, and then there's one for a gopher that's kind of listening, but we'll, we'll see that when it makes sense. So if I say that we have two generators, you kind of want to picture two gophers um, talking. And again, they could be doing this in parallel, you don't know and it doesn't really matter for you, but they are independent, right? These two gophers are different. They might be doing the same work, or might be doing different work, it doesn't really matter. All right, so I just kinda wanna give you a heads up and down when you see that in later on when instead of writing back all this stuff with go routine, I'll just use a gopher to represent a go routine, and if I use one that's speaking through a microphone, I'm basically saying that a gopher is somehow a generator or producing something, okay? All right. So let's go take a look at our code. And so we're gonna do start off here by um, reusing our code from chapter two, and this is section four. And so I'm going there and start off our code editor. And oh, by the way, uh, the slides that I'm referring to on that talk is here, which I put in the resources, okay? All right, um, so let's do this and um, we can look at a code and let's make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so um, let's increase the font here and we can make it really big. And so we're going to start with this. All right, so we had um, here, we created a channel of int and then um, we waited a little bit, okay, to get some stuff and we had it generating some data. To sort of turn this into a generator, what we're going to do is we really want to say, you know what, the responsibility of, you know, 
why should we have to worry about making the channel? Why don't we call the producer, have it return the channel to us? So we're doing something like this, um, something more like this, right? We don't have to tell the producer which channel. And then we can call our go or consumer with that channel. Now, this, we can cut it out from here and we can go to our producer and say, hey, you make the channel, right? This is going to be out. You make the channel, of course it doesn't accept anything, and you return the channel to me, right? But of course if we run this like it is, it makes a channel and it sits here, loop around on it, and we have to wait until it finished producing data in order for it to you know, uh, return the channel. So we don't want that. So what we wanna do is actually wrap this in a go routine, right? And so how do we wrap this in a go routine? Well, we do just that. Bam. Ah, there we go. Um, we say font um, that takes no parameter. And we say go. It says a nanowatt function, essentially. Go run this thing. Go routine on this, right? On this function. So we just pass a, a function. And we say, hey, go run this. Um, of course, we might want to close where we finish so that our, um, you know, whoever's reading from our channel kind of um, know that we're done. So does this make sense? Now, this is an anonymous function, which I said that you can use a go routine on an anonymous function. If this is too much for you to, to think, just imagine that I cut this out, I replace it with the name generator here, or generate, let's see, right? Um, so maybe I, I do this, uh, let's do this this way. Um, so I call this generator and I call this produce and, um, let's close this out here. And so maybe what I have is font, um, produce and I paste this here. Okay. So this sort of make more sense now. Um, and it, it was exactly what we had before, which is, um, you know, of course I would have to pass in out here, out channel of int, right? Um, I have to pass that in here. So out channel of int. So essentially what I'm doing is my generator makes a channel, launches a go routine to produce on that channel and then return the channel, but because it launches the go routine here, my generator is not blocked. It's like, hey, I create a channel, go produce on it, I return it, and that's why in my main here, um, you know, it can just it can just call the generator to get that channel and then pass it on to um, my consumer. Does that make sense? So, whatever reason, my I have to too many arguments to return. Oh, I don't specify here that my generator um, actually returns a channel of int, okay? So I need to say that. And so I hope you, so let's make sure that this runs. Um, let's see, use a value, generator func. Um, I think this is actually fine. Um, it's just that my thing is now updating uh, too many arguments to return. No, this is now updated, so this is fine. So I'm saying generator, when you call generator, it returns, it doesn't take anything, return a channel of int, it makes a channel of int, it returns it, it passes that channel of int to a producer, and here's my producer who takes channel of int, and it is running on it. This producer, produce method here is gonna become a go routine, and just keep producing on it. And there's my consumer that accept a channel of int, and consumes it and there's the go routine that launches that and so this should be able to run so run main and there we go right um, I don't know it's doing it's creating a bunch of values let's see uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, well I waited too long so um, I created a number of values so, so that's what's happening here um, I could uh, if I put a pipe on this um, less than I should see, you know, waiting and hello consumer, blah, blah, blah. And then there's my, 
producer generating some values, eventually it consumed all the value that was, might consume or consume all the values that were generated, and then it just sat there waiting and then it can just keep reading. Um, once the channel is closed, it keep reading zero value. If you remember, we covered that whole thing about a closed channel, what that means, right? Whereas if I don't close it, it's going to wait and because it's going to try to wait to receive a value, it's going to end up just doing waiting on generator instead, right? So after I've done generated all the values, now I should see is just waiting on generator because the channel is still open. Whereas if it was closed, well, I would have gotten zero. Okay. So, so that is our generator and that's working. So I'm saying is instead of writing yet another function called produced here, just so we can feel good about doing this, why not just take this code from here and stick it right here. So replace this with this code, stick it right there. And of course, I don't need the function name because it's an anonymous function. So I have that, right? Now, since I'm creating an anonymous function inside of this go routine, this will still work. I can show you that. I'm just going to run it and you see it still works, right? And I'm getting zero now because I did not, um, I closed my channel. So we talked about this already, so I'm not going to keep mentioning that. Um, um, but yeah, let's keep it close. Um, but since this go routine is this anonymous function here, was created inside of this generator, it has access to this variable. So I don't really need to pass this in. So I could simplify my life by just taking this out of here and I don't need to pass it in when I call the go routine, right? So I can just do just like that and it would work also. So there. Right, and then bam, because I closed my channel. All right, and so that is one way in which we fulfill this generator, um, makes a channel, launches a go routine on that channel to do the work, and then return, it's able to return it. And so that's simplified from our main, we can just have this generator generate a, return a value. So let's call our generator here, instead of calling it generator, we can call it producer, just because we want to call it a producer. But it's a generator, it's satisfied the pattern the generator pattern, right? Which I said is to create a channel, return it, and launches a go routine on that channel. The advantage of this now is that you can create, have call multiple generators, right? So I can call this channel zero, for example, and then I can call this channel one, channel two, and each time I call my producer here, it generates, it returns another channel. And so now I can have consumer that you know, consume from that, from those um, channels. So I could run multiple consumers, each consuming from that, those channels. Now we, later on, we're gonna learn other patterns that allow us to say, I have multiple generators generating on this channel. How do I take all these values that are coming in on these different channels and put it back on one channel? That's called fanning, and we'll see that. And you might want to do that because one of your generator might be faster than the other and so on. And so from the point of view of you seeing values that are produced, you just really want to see the result of all these values coming in on one stream and not how many generators you have. But we'll, we'll get to that. But at least now you see the benefit of when you have the generator taking care of creating the channel, it simplifies how you can, can then use it. So let's undo this and just keep it simple. Um, the way we had it, we're going to see in the next video how we're going to reuse this idea of having, um, using multiple generators. Okay, so that's it for this video on generators. And in the next video, we're going to extend this sim simple example. All right, see you in the next video. Thanks for your time.